And freedom in Christ has really been the biggest tool for us to get to that place of where I, our identity is, recognizing lies and believing the truth of who we are. So, we're, you know, a lot of this when you've been believers for a long time seems like, I already know this. But trust me, there are pieces in there that I know you will think, I never thought of it this way. Um, so that's Wendy Smith. What is freedom in Christ? Freedom of Christ is a ministry of reconciliation to help us, the captives, find and walk in the freedom we can have in our identity in Christ. It's for every Christian, from those who have been Christians for a long time, to those who have only just made that decision, from those who are progressing steadily to those who feel stuck. It's designed to help you break through to a greater level of spiritual maturity, uncover any areas of deception holding you back, resolve personal and spiritual conflict, learn strategies to renew your mind and break free from negative thinking and unhelpful patterns of behavior. Freedom of Christ does not focus on how to behave, but on how to believe. Now you're going to see a lot of pictures in here of sessions that I do, okay? And I have permission to use photos. I have permission to tell stories without names. And if you notice, there's very few that you see a face. You don't need to see their face. Um, this little girl came to me, and she was abandoned by her father at a very young age. Her mother was in and out of jail. She used drugs with her mom. She had resorted to cutting and self-harm and had been in and out of facilities. And when she came, this is the very first day she came, and she picked dude who's got pigeon toes and is kind of limpy because he was broken like her. The horses just helped the walls come down so they can talk about life and then I can give them Jesus. And that's what the county, the social workers, the other people can't give them. This little girl would continue, will continue to be broken until she knows Jesus can set her free, right? She'll keep those chains on and no medication in the world can fix that kind of broken and those kind of lies that she believes, only Jesus. The original design. God made, made in God's image. So we were made in God's image. Originally in the garden, Adam and Eve had, had acceptance, significance, security. And then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Um, this little girl, if you notice her outfit, the day she came to our facility, she'd been dropped off the night before. She, she'd come from a teen facility, a juvenile facility, been dropped off at a foster home. The next morning, she had just met this foster mother, parent in the evening. In the morning, the foster mother had an, another appointment, so brought her to another stranger, who then brought her to my house. She didn't dare ask the second lady for breakfast, because the first one didn't have time to feed her, and her bag never came with her. So she came to my house in what she'd worn to bed. Her story is another traumatic story um, of abuse and 
resorting to drugs. Mom, mom also, she used drugs with mom. She's been abused and been in and out of places. Also some help, self-harm. And I just loved her that day. <coughs> she let me hug her. And look what she did with that horse. They just, they just want to hug them. It's so, it's so amazing. Um, do you think this beautiful child of God knew God's original design for her to feel safe, secure, and significant? There's no feeling safe, secure, and significant in that kind of life, going from foster home to foster home, never knowing if she's going back to mom for a little while and then back to somebody else's house. All. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. And what was the first thing Adam said after they sinned? I was afraid. So, in the garden, I think of not just Adam and Eve, but I think of the animals. So when did fear happen for that horse? Weren't all the animals in the garden at peace with each other if it was perfect? There was no prey animal or predator. So it doesn't really tell us for sure, but I would assume that fear came for them when it came for us. And now they are prey animals and they are born with fear that something's gonna eat them. And until we build their trust, they look at us as predators. So that's another piece that I use with the kids, that you are like their little God. And it can, it can, you can also talk about that relationship with their Heavenly Father as well then. How much he loves you and how much he wants you to put your trust in him. It opens so many doors to talk about faith. So the consequences of the fall, obviously, are that acceptance turned to rejection, significance was replaced with guilt and shame, security turned to fear, and spiritual death and blindness happened. And you know, I always thought about Adam and Eve and how they sinned, but do you ever really think about that? That because of us being born into sin, we automatically have those things. We have guilt, shame, rejection, and fear from the time we're little. And all we want to do is gain acceptance somehow. We're always looking for something. Like I said, it's our kids, our husband, it's alcohol, it's drugs. If you've got trauma, we go to something to get that sense of peace that we can only have with Christ. This picture reminds me of us. So we're born spiritually blind and dead. And I can look at people differently when I think of them, think of us as dead people walking, right? Until we know Christ, it says we're walking in darkness. So we can love people differently if we see them as Jesus does. Until they know Christ, we are just walking in darkness like this horse um, so we buy into a lot of things I have so many little kids now crippled with fear and anxiety and where is it all coming from the root is the enemy for so many things we know there are clinical things in a fallen world that we need medication for but there are so many things that are just because we buy into the lies of the enemy and we don't know Christ. Obviously what Jesus came to do, the thief comes only to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. He who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son does not have life. 1 John 5, 12. Eternal life is not just something we get when we die. It's a whole different quality of life right now. 
And I think the biggest thing for me, when I look at that, I look at that differently now, Jesus came to die for me. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. I'm a sinner saved by grace. What does that make you feel like? It still makes me feel like a sinner. What if we look at that verse? He came to give me life. I'm not dead anymore. I'm not a sinner saved by grace. I'm a saint. What does it call us in the New Testament? Are we still called a sinner once we're saved? We're a saint, a holy one. So if I start thinking of myself as having new life. He came to give me life, abundant life. I'm no longer going to stay in that place of, I'm just a sinner. <clears throat> what, do, what does that do? That I'm just going to sin then. If I think of myself as a saint, I'm more likely to believe that and walk in that and believe that my Father can keep me there, right? So who are you? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So we can't be both darkness and light, can we? We're either light or darkness. Yeah, we still have an old Adam that wants to rear its ugly head, right? We have a sin nature, but we can walk over here. And when we mess up and go back here, we're still a saint. And we repent and we move on. So the, I use this photo because it kind of reminds me of that tug of war. And yeah, we become new creations, but is that old Adam and that new creation. And the other piece, the other analogy I like to use is a computer. When we become Christians, we don't erase the hard drive. I wish we could. Wouldn't that be great if we could just delete the past? But in some ways, I don't want to delete my past because God can use me because of that past to help other people as long as I don't get sucked back into believing lies about who I am today. And this course is so much fun. This is literally tug of war and he loves to play. <laughs> it's so much fun. That's Moses. <laughs> so, what is faith? We all have faith in something. Is the object of our faith Jesus? Have you put your trust in Jesus, or are you still half in and half out of the trailer? If you've surrendered your life to Christ, do you still look like this horse? Do you believe that you are a saint, a holy one? For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. And that's where, when I made that decision for Christ, for so long, I was still that way. I just had those two feet in the trailer because I didn't trust. I didn't trust that he really had my back, that he promised he would take care of me. I still relied on me instead of surrendering to him. So I love that picture because that horse is resisting. It's got fear of going in that trailer and following its master up into that trailer, just like, oh, it's so hard for us to just surrender that stuff, like Marnie was saying. Just surrender it, give it up. Truth. For by grace we have been saved through faith. This is not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. 
I love that scripture. Mm -hmm. I love that. You don't have to have a heart. We don't have to have a hard heart anymore. He gives us a soft new heart. Being a saint is not about learning how to behave. It's learning how to believe. If we see ourselves as sinners, that is how we will behave. Satan wants to cripple our faith walk by getting us to believe lies about who we are rather than truth. And there's a couple stories here, too. Um, the picture on the left is a little boy that's 10 years old. And um, too much of this. He's been pulling out his hair. And he's had suicidal ideation. Um, I can't remember the name. But on his device, he saw somebody doing the perfect suicide plan. This is reality that I see all the time. And the kids are just watching these games that have them believing lies, that have them going to those places of wanting to die. This little girl has a handicap. You can't see that arm, but it's shorter than the other one. She hates school because she doesn't have any friends. Maybe she would have friends, but she believes she's different and not worthy of friends. So she isolates at home. Her family doesn't do things, so she has no outside activities whatsoever. So her big sister asked if I would see her, and I said, yeah, of course. And when she comes and sees Maverick, she's free. There's nothing that kid will not try to do with that horse. Mm -hmm. She's on his back using that short arm to put a, something over a cone or whatever she needs to do. There's no fear. There's no, um, there's no worry about her physical disability. And I just love her. She knew nothing about Jesus. A lot about mythology, believes in gods and goddesses. And I felt resistance at first when I, every time the kids come, they all get a Bible verse laminated. And a lot of them just can't wait for their verse. She didn't want those verses at first, and I didn't push, I didn't push. But we're new creations, ladies. If we have a new heart, aren't those people going to start seeing us and wondering what's different about her? That's what I've been doing with her. And every day that I go out to do a session, <coughs> I used to plan them. I used to plan it all out. Now I say, God, I have no idea what that kid needs to be, but you do. Mm -hmm. I do not know what's in their heart, but you do. Just Make me a vessel for you. So who I am in Christ, accepted, secure, significant. We get back what was stolen in the garden. In your packet, I don't know, like on page three, um, <coughs> there's a list of who I am in Christ. I gave you a lot of stuff in there for homework, and really look it over. If um, We'll talk a little bit about strongholds and lies, but if you identify a place, read those truths, and if one of them doesn't feel true, read it every day for 40 days until you believe it. When the enemy comes to hit you with whatever he always does, now I have tools. Now I can say, wait a minute, Satan. You got nothing here. No, that's not true. That's a lie. Because this is who I am. This little girl is just precious to me. Um, yeah. She was abused by a mother ended up living with her father. 
the girls, girlfriends in and out. She ended up in and out of facilities a lot. They've given her a lot of labels. And I tell her when she comes to me that she doesn't have any labels but a daughter of the king. And this is her first day there. And she got down on her knees in front of the horses so that they would trust her. And I was able to use that to talk about her Heavenly Father. And she cries every time I give her a verse. And God is so good. Every time she comes, the verse is just what she needs. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with him. Object of our faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11.6 If you want to know what someone really believes, don't listen to what they say, but look at what they do. Isn't that the truth? We can say a lot of things, but our actions tell what we really believe in our hearts. The words that come out of our mouths tell what's in this heart. If I feel ugly about this, that's what's going to come out of my mouth. If there's pain and hurt and shame in here, who was it that talked today? Was it Marnie or someone else about the anger that comes out? Mm -hmm. The root of anger is fear. The Israelites saw Goliath, I love this and I tell the kids this, the Israelites saw Goliath in relationship to themselves and had fear. David saw the giant in relationship to his God and how big his God was, and he had peace. If we can face every trauma, every fear, knowing our God is bigger than Goliath, how will we do life differently? This little girl has seizures seizures almost every day of her life. She's now got a device that helps to stop them, but she still will end up in the ER. When she came to me, the social worker said, I don't know, maybe you can just do stuff on the ground with her um, just so she has something she feels good about. And we did that, and she wanted to ride. She wanted to run barrels. <laughs> <laughs> so I talked to her mom, and we decided that we were going to trust God. Her mom said she doesn't have anything in life that she can feel good about and feel like she's free of her seizures. In three years, she's never had a seizure on a horse. Last week, she was loping bareback. Oh my. She went home and told her mom, I was riding like the wind. <laughs> She loves the movie Spirit. Yeah. <clears throat> That's God. Only God that she would never have a seizure. It's been hot some days. We're giving her drinks constantly, you know, because the heat can cause a seizure. But God knows that she needs that. Faith in action. 